Hi, I'm Alex Spud, and you're watching Enemy with a living, breathing, rocking and rolling legend. It's Ronnie Wood. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Ronnie, I wanted to start off by taking you on a little trip down memory lane. Because mm -hmm. Enemy and the Stones go back a long time. Yeah. And I've bought a couple of uh, old Enemy covers that I wanted to show you and see if you could sort of remember anything from them. Because it was a... Oh, what a was... great idea. <laughs> so we've got a couple there. The first one is, we've announced that Ronnie has said no to the Stones before you said yes and joined the Stones. <laughs> so we got that one wrong. <laughs> Rod says yes to Brandy. <laughs> I've no idea what that Ron means. Ron says no to the Stones. <laughs> What? And that picture is you and Mick at the Faces Christmas party. Wow, Do you have really? any memories of that? <laughs> Do that, Sal. <laughs> <laughs> and then the next one is you and Keith on tour together. And uh, Charles Shaw Murray went on the road with you guys. Do you remember anything about... That looks like the New Barbarians. Neil Young gave me that name. Oh, really? So I said, I've got this band I want to take out and I'm my, you know, my solo band. And he said, well, there used to be a band in Canada called... The, the Barbarians. He said, why don't you call yourself the new Barbarians? And I went, great idea in there. What was it like being on tour with uh, Keith back in those days? Great. We still argued exactly the same <laughs> now as we did then. I'm still as cheeky as I was, and he's still as dogmatic as he was. <laughs> Mick and I had great fun, you can tell that, because he used to uh, come along to um, face his gigs and hide behind the amps. And I said, what are you doing, Nick? He said, I want to see what colour pyjamas Rod's wearing tonight. Because <laughs> Rod used to wear these stripy, silky numbers and feather boas and everything. See what she's wearing tonight, dear. <laughs> yeah, really funny. OK, I'll take those off you now, because um, we've got to talk about the new album. Oh, OK. Forgot about that, didn't we? That's why we're here. No, we didn't, really. <laughs> this is the first album since Charlie, sadly, passed away. Was his presence felt in the studio? Oh yeah, all the time. I was the last one to see Charlie in the hospital in London. Anyway, to cut a long story short, he said, I want to get out of this bloody place. <laughs> he said, but until I do, will you please make sure that Steve Jordan carries the flag for me, you know? And he said, and then when I get better, I'll come and join you. He said, but please, um, let Steve Jordan play in my place. Yeah. yeah. And um, I said, don't worry about that. We got you covered, Charlie, you know. And he said, all right, now I can watch uh, Frankie Dettori win the next race at York <laughs> or wherever. <laughs> Go and get out, Ronnie. I've got to watch yeah. the race. <laughs> we were watching the telly together. He loved the horse racing. I mean, what a great album with Steve Jordan on. The Lady Gaga track, Sweet Sound of Heaven, is like stunning. I've listened to it like seven times in a row. Well, it's got genius on it. It's yeah. got Stevie Wonder, yeah. you know what I mean? What was it like in the studio with First Lady Gaga and then Stevie coming in? That must have been amazing. Yeah, we'd already cut the track with Stevie and um, Lady was just sitting on the floor and uh, singing along with Mick's rough vocal, you know, and he's going, hey, that sounds pretty good. Do you want it? Do you want to make a go of it, you know? And she said, yeah. He said, well, come on then, stand up and let's go and work it out. And that the whole album was very rewarding with, uh, you know, we had the schoolboy, Paul McCartney. Yeah, I played with the Rolling Stones. He was so happy, you know. And there's a great bit on that track, uh, Bite My Head Off, that Paul's on, yeah. where Mick introduces him by yeah. putting on Come a, on, Paul! Yeah, in a Scouse accent. Play something! <laughs> How did Paul react to that? Or does he, did he not know that was going to be on there? Yeah, it was all part of the party, you know. <laughs> he was loving it. He actually played on two tracks, one which we've got up our sleeve for, you know, for uh, more things to come, more music to come. So not on this album, he's on another track? Because we cut about 23 songs yeah. and we picked the best 12 or the first 12. So it might not be another 20 or so years until the next album? I don't think it will be that long. We're all kicking uh, inspiration and uh, positive vibes around, you know? What were the other tracks did they sound like? Were they a bit different kind of genre-wise or do you have any memories of those? They've either got the essence when we first hit the song or they haven't you know and um some of the songs were a little hesitant and sort of yeah we need to look at that again and we you know that's the way you make good music is to you know mold it like a clay model or, or something you know the ancient or you art. carve it out of the stone like the leonardo or, uh, michelangelo you know it's wonderful to compare art and uh 
construction of music too. And I also heard a rumour that Elton John is on this album. Well, so did I, you know. <laughs> I wasn't in the studio when it came down, but I did speak to him on Zoom and he was going, Ronnie, I've got to be on the album. I said, well, look, it's not up to me. I also wanted to mention to you that Bill Wyman came in to play a bit too on the new record. Yeah, I know. But that was um, Andrew Watt's idea. Yeah. He, you know, we said we had this track with Charlie's drum track on it. I'm going to get Bill Wyman. I'm going to ask him. And, and that's a great idea. You know, and, and Bill was, was great. And uh, Andrew said, I had so much fun with him because he closed the studio and just got Bill in. So none of us were there when Bill did his thing. But uh, he said, man, I had such a great time. How many of the new songs are you going to play live? Because presumably you are going out on the road with this album. Oh, that's the next thing we're going to do um, next week is uh, see how they translate live, which I have complete faith we could play the whole album, you know what I mean? But they'll go, oh, Ronnie, you know, he's so ambitious. And You've got to have so, satisfaction in the set list and stuff like that, and you need to make room for that. Of well, course, we're not going to forget the back catalogue, you know, yeah. there are certain songs, you know, Paint It Black and Satisfaction, blah, blah, that have got to be played. And, I mean, I'm a big fan of Glastonbury and the Stones have played that before. Were you there when we played it? No, I was at the, the, Hyde, I? I was at the Hyde Park gigs, so oh. I did see some of those shows, and they were obviously amazing. But 2024 mm. feels like, with a new album, you're gonna be playing shows probably. In Stones America, we, we've got a lot uh, of uh, gigs left undone, you know, yeah. because of the pandemic and all that. Yeah. So we've gotta go back and settle the score in America, and that's what we're going to try and do. And then once the, the band is rolling again, you know. Would you like to play Glastonbury again? Oh, me? I'd love it, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I think it's a, a must. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure you can't give it away, but who knows, maybe Glastonbury next year could be a, a good one or the year well, after. Well, if not then, we, we, you know, if not the, the Stones, it'll be the faces, me and Rod and Kenny. <laughs> That'd be brilliant, yeah. <laughs> that's not out of the question, you know. I know they want to do it. Yesterday, Jimmy Fallon was doing his Mick impression on stage. Bam, 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 it's off the hook. Good evening, everyone. Hello, I'm going to do the sermon today. All right, here we go. Who's getting the communion? Who's doing it? Oh, all right. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. That's not how I speak. <laughs> it's also a nutcase, folks. I saw Will Hodgkinson who's the Times music critic, pointed out on Twitter that if the Stones last nine more years, they'll have outlived the Soviet Union. Wow. That's a doddle. Nine yeah. years is a doddle. <laughs> the Soviet Union? Yeah. You're... Wow, <laughs> my God. You were chatting to Elton, Reg, on the phone, obviously, so he's had Rocket Man, Queen have had Bohemian Rhapsody. Surely there's a Stones biopic on the horizon. Would you guys ever say yes to that? And who would play you all? The Iron's been in the fire for many years of like different approaches to it. Uh, I always leave that to the original members, you know, I'm not going to interfere. People have been uh, suggesting Harry Styles would make a great Mick. Oh, I thought he'd play me. <laughs> <laughs> he could have you if you like, you know. Harry's my mate. Yeah, I, I suppose he has that kind of fire, but I don't think anybody has the cheek that Mick used to have and still has. I mean, he's got more front than Harrods. Are there any young bands you can think of that are kind of carrying the torch for rock and roll in 2023, the way the Stones have done for so long? I haven't seen new live bands for a long time. I mean, lots of people tell me about 1975 and there's not a lot of live music that, uh, there's a lot of music to be grabbed out there. And I just hope more people play live like we do because we, we're so busy making music yeah. I don't get a chance to see a lot of music. I wanted to ask you how are Mick and Keith getting along these days because they've always been like bickering brothers are they still like yeah. that? I think they're more friendly now than ever Yeah, and it's a wonderful thing to see all my bloody efforts have paid off. <laughs> That's why I wanted to ask you. It feels like sometimes you've you've been like the sort of the, the older sort of sibling being like, come on guys, get it together, sort of. Yeah, uh, that well, especially like that in the 80s and 90s and yeah. stuff when it, the, the whole thing could have folded, you know. And I said, no, I'm not letting this institution crumble. <laughs> Guys have got to get together, talk. There you had it, Ronnie Wood, the, the childminder of uh, Mick and you know, Keith. Naughty schoolboys, a pair of them. <laughs> Thanks so much for chatting to us, Ronnie, it's been a pleasure. <laughs> and for the last 60 years, it's been Thanks, a pleasure. Thanks, Alex.